Is your 6.0 power stroke not starting? Maybe you've developed a long crank. Let's not forget a hot no start condition. Then stay tuned because in this video we're going to start talking about how to diagnose these issues, what some repairs are, and what our future plans for this series is. We're getting started right now. Now, unlike my merch, one thing you are going to need to buy to continue is some type of monitor or scanner to be able to look at this. Now, the cheap ones you get at an auto store, a lot of the cheap ones on Amazon and eBay aren't going to cut it for diagnosing your six liter. The most affordable thing to get started is to get a $5 to $10, five to $10 OBD2 Bluetooth connector, affiliate links down below and Torque Pro on your Android device. I will do a video on setting Torque Pro up so you can know how to use this on your six liter, but it's actually a really affordable and very powerful uh, tool in order to start figuring out what's going on with your truck and how you can kind of fix it or figure out what's going on so you don't have to pay for necessarily some of the diagnostic fees that might be out there. Now, if you're looking for something a little better, in my opinion, Forescan is a really premium product and it doesn't really carry a premium price tag along with it. For $35 to $60 for a nice OBD2 connector that'll plug into your laptop, you can have a ton of functionality and it doesn't take a crazy expensive laptop in, or in order to run it. What makes Forescan such a great tool is it lets you look at all the different modules on your truck, your BCM, your T's, everything. It's not just looking at codes that you're, that you're getting from uh, your check engine light. It's literally everything out there on your truck. So it's a really powerful tool. And again, it's really affordable. So now armed with your new diagnostic software that we've talked about, what do you need to actually look at in order to find out why your six liter is having either a long crank or a no start condition, whether that's cold or hot no starts. So I'm gonna list everything if there, I'm gonna put it on screen here. If there's anything I miss, I'll make sure to mark it there. But the biggest things you wanna look at, we need battery voltage, FICO main voltage, ICP measured in voltage, IPR percentage, FICOM sync, cam sync. I'm gonna now go down this list and kind of talk about each of these here. So battery voltage, relatively self-explanatory. If we're not putting out enough voltage, the truck's not gonna start. Diesel engines take a lot to crank over. That's why there's two big batteries under there. You should, in my opinion, always be running 850 cold cranking amps. Point being, we need 12 volts minimum. Now it doesn't mean under a good running truck that if you crank it you might hit 11 something but much under like 11 5 and you're going to start decreasing how well the truck's going to turn over now it's also important once your truck starts that your voltage comes back up we can't stay under 12 and once your glow plug shut off we need that voltage to be in the 13s uh, preferably high 13s to low 14s is where we'd like to be six liters can have a bit of an issue with this but which is a video i plan to kind of try to fix later but mid to high 13s and you're good that also will let us know that your alternator is doing its job as well. Ficka main, we never want to see this number under 47 volts. Um, I am not a fan of the added volt one models out there. 54, I think is pretty popular, 58 volts. Your system's designed around 48 volts. 47 to 49 is where a factory one lives when it's healthy. And uh, that's really where you want to be, in my opinion. If you're looking for a little extra horsepower, do it the right way, and that's through tuning, not through adding additional volts to your injectors. Voltage to your injectors is dropping. You're in the low 40s, high 30s, or even worse. Um, first off, you're going to see a massive performance decrease in your truck. Your fuel economy tends to tank. Uh, your power is not going to be being made because the injector is not working properly in how it's supposed to be controlled. So this is not going to be just create hard and long crank situations. This is also going to create a massive performance reduction in fuel economy. So this is a good one to monitor even when you're not having startup issues because you want to know that your FICOM is healthy and doing its job the way it's intended to do. So FICOM sync is another thing we need here. If that's not happening on your truck, your injectors will not fire, thus your truck will not start. So aside from the voltage, also making sure it has sync is very important. Again, the batteries being at least at 12 volts or close to 12 volts around startup. The FICOM works as an amplifier. 12 volts in pushes 48 volts out. So when you're not supplying at least a minimum of 12 volts to it, it's going to have a much harder time creating that 48 volts. That's one of the main reasons why FICOMs actually fail is a lack of maintenance on the charging system or an improperly working charging system on your 6.0. Now we're gonna get into some things that aren't quite as easy to understand, and that is really related to your high pressure oil system. So the injectors on a six liter are hydraulically actuated. So that means that we need oil pressure to make them fire. And there's two very important things on it. That's the ICP sensor 
and then the IPR valve. That is, the valve is a mechanical part of the truck and basically what that IPR does is it bleeds off oil pressure depending on the requirement of your truck. The ICP sensor is telling us how much pressure we have. You can read it in PSI and if you're not tuned, it should be an accurate reading. But if you're in a tuned truck, like a lot of the audience is gonna be, you need to measure it in voltage and convert the voltage over to a PSI reading. I will link that either down in the description or on screen, potentially maybe both. So you need five to 600 PSI of oil pressure in order for your truck to start. Uh, you'll then see it typically spike up and then kind of settle down once your truck is fully warm. It is normal for your IPR to be a little high and ICP to be a little high as your truck is warming up. That's kind of how it's programmed to do it. You idle slightly higher and then once the truck is at operating temp, we're at 180, 190, then it'll kind of settle back down. Typically you'll see your PSI about 550, 600 during a warm idling conditions. I will be making a video discussing this in greater detail. I'm just trying to give you a quick overview of it and what some of the things might seem, but we will go into this. This is a big topic that I'm not covering in one video. This is really just the information you guys need to take this, uh, maybe on the forums, which while there's some bad advice out there, there is some really good advice out there as well. But you need to gather this information to take it there so we can help people like myself and others can help you figure out what's going on with your truck. I wanna have a real big disclaimer here. The later style high pressure oil pumps or H-pops as people call them, rarely fail. It can happen as anything can fail. It is very rare. They're a very robust, durable unit. What does happen is there's a snap to connect fitting on the back of them, that tends to leak. Standpipes and dummy plugs in the 04 and a half through end of production, they also can leak. Ford has released updated parts for this to address this issue, but do not go replacing your high pressure oil pump just because someone doesn't know how to diagnose your truck correctly. There's typically a leak on those, not a pump failure. Now rewind to the early years and you have the opposite issue. They rarely ever leak on the high pressure oil system. And if they do, it's typically an O-ring that sits on a J-tube that's on top of the pump. That's what actually typically leaks on them. There's a J-tube that goes into the high pressure oil pump cover, which feeds the IPR valve and ICP sensor on the early styles. That tends to be your leak point right there is that O-ring. A little bit of an involved fix. You got to pull the turbo to get to it. However, it's a cheap one in the scheme of things if you're doing it yourself. But the early years do suffer from a much higher rate of failed high pressure oil pumps, especially as these trucks are getting older and there's more mostly high mileage ones out there now. Um, you're probably, you could have a failure on it. I see everybody just recommending the adrenaline pumps and I don't know that that's the best advice in my opinion. Uh, if you want the billet design, the adrenaline pumps look really cool. You're never gonna see it. Atlas is a company that has um, billet pumps now as well. They seem to be pretty reliable from what I'm seeing. That'll probably be, if I need to upgrade mine again, that'll probably be what I upgrade to. I'm running a CNC Fab Stage 1, which was slightly higher output than factory uh, using the factory housing, but the factory housing has actually had revisions. So a lot of the failures related to it are kind of resolved at this point. They still have a higher failure rate, but it is much better than it was when the six liter first came out. As for ICP and IPR, again, ICP measure in voltage, there isn't much to talk about. You need that five, five to 600 PSI for your truck to start. IPR, this is an important value to read because if your truck normally peaks at say 50% as it's starting up and you notice it creeping up to 60, 70, if it's getting up to 85 and your truck is starting, 85% is it command, it's as closed as it's gonna get, meaning you're delivering all of the ICP pressure to your truck that it can create or high pressure oil in this scenario. And if you still can't start under that, that means there's either a really big leak or your high pressure oil pump has failed depending on your year for those two scenarios. There is one other thing to consider and that is that your ICP sensor can fail. In this scenario, very easy to test unplug your ICP sensor, re, ugh, attempt to restart your truck. If that is the case and it starts, it'll go to an inferred value, basically meaning your truck is, the computer looks at what is happening, what you're asking for from it, and it goes to an inferred value, just basically what they think it should be for your truck. So if that happens, that's an easy fix. It's an ICP sensor. Sometimes the pigtail or connector that goes into it is oil soaked 
and needs replaced. I've seen that as well. You guys heard me reference cam sync. This is another thing that your truck won't go over or try to even really start. It will crank, but it won't actually try to start if your cam sync is not registering. This is a sensor on the front driver side of the block. I mean, it's slightly off to the side, but driver side towards the front of it. Um, relatively inexpensive sensor and it will stop your truck from starting. I had a long uh, crank at one point and everything else on my truck was healthy. Turned out I wasn't getting cam sync until like literally maybe six, seven seconds in and then it would truck would fire up. So I replaced the sensor that fixed it completely. So that is now resolved. Um, something to keep in mind. I do want to talk about one other thing a lot of people don't think about starters. You can have a failing starter. Maybe your bolts come loose if you've had work recently. So making sure your starter is one, tightened to the truck correctly. And then two, the power connector to your starter is tightened down the whole way. So you're getting good contact with it. Starters is another place you'll hear people not talk about long cranks, but they can be a major culprit of it. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean your starter is failing, but go check it out. Corrosion can get on the negative terminals in there, or there's like a negative wire connecting things that can be breaking through as well, giving you a lot of other symptoms, but your truck vital signs, so to speak, will check out and it'll give you a kind of a weird situation. So I have seen that as well. If all of these things are healthy on your truck and you're really having a hard time, another thing to consider is are your glow plugs functioning properly? Um, they typically will throw codes, but not necessarily always. So you wanna check that. They do have a module that controls them, can go bad, uh, and then the wiring to them directly. So there is a couple other things on these trucks that could be causing this. Just things you need to be looking into. Again, they're less uh, in your face and maybe not as common of an issue, but something to consider in the back of your head as well. Now, to be clear, these are not the only conditions that will cause no starts. These are just, this really will make up most of the issues for people that I've seen. There are other things we can investigate that further. Grounding issues can be an issue for any vehicle, not just six liters, but you know, if your grounds are going bad, that can cause a no start issue. Again, especially if everything else is healthy. Although typically you'll see a grounding issue in battery voltage issues as well. So uh, there's a lot to think about here. I hope this is a good intro guys. We are gonna break each of these topics down, really go into fix it, like in-depth repairs of some of these parts for people and talk about all your options as well. This video series is gonna be meant to help prevent guys from throwing parts at stuff. Data log your information while you're trying to start your truck um, and send that over to people on the forums. If your truck does start, but you're kind of dealing with a long crank that you're worried about, I would ask that you also get this information recorded once it's up to operating temp and re-record it. In that scenario as well, turn your truck off, wait a minute, and then try to start it right back up and see if it starts because that could help indicate if you have a hot no start versus a cold no start or long crank. So they do help people that really understand the trucks lead you in the right direction so anyway guys if you haven't already again please hit that subscribe button helps channel out a lot drop those likes down below also comment what has been your issue and what are you trying to work through i do try to get back to as many people as i can and uh what's cool in the comments on videos like this is there can really form a lot of helpful information for other people going through similar things so drop those comments down below i'll see you in the next upload